riddled with DRM from time to time. There's been some nasty uh, DRM. They brought back encryption, encrypting your channels with DRM. DRM encryption is plaguing ATSC 3.0 stations all across America. No, this does not mean that you have to pay for over-the-air TV. This simply means that they're implementing copy protection on some of their channels. DRM, or digital rights management, on ATSC 3.0 broadcasts is similar to the copy protections found on DRM. DVDs and Blu-rays. DRM encryption is implemented in order to prevent piracy. This has negative implications on a variety of ways that you enjoy over-the-air TV, starting with recording over-the-air broadcasts. First, recording over-the-air broadcasts is protected under the Supreme Court in the United States. When this Supreme Court case was decided, consumers were using VCRs and VHS tapes to record over-the-air NTSC broadcasts. In fact, as long as the tapes still play, a recording from many decades ago on a VHS tape will still play today. What I'm about to show you is a recording made on a VHS tape over 21 years ago. In order to create a digital copy of these tapes, I use the VidBox and the corresponding software for macOS. More on this in a future video. Here's a storm watcher. We are still watching lake effect snow bands. We have multiple bands right now. We're going to see more shear as we get into the afternoon, which will cut down on the intensity of these bands. But currently the heaviest activity. Nowadays, I use a Plex server that automatically records a one-to-one -one copy of the digital stream sent on the ATSC 1.0 broadcast. Here's a sample of a recording I made just a few months ago. Right now we're waiting for the cold front to pass through, but before that cold front, we still have some warmer temperatures lingering closer to the Pennsylvania line. Both of these were recorded from broadcasts without encryption and were recorded to universal formats that can be played virtually anywhere. This is where ATSC 3.0 has the ability to disrupt this. If an ATSC 3.0 channel has encryption, like is the case with all of the channels on WTVJ in Miami, and on channel 7 on WNYO in Buffalo, the recording will be laced with DRM. This means that playback of that file can only occur on an approved device. Essentially, a recording is tied to a device or an account. This means that if anything happened to that device, or if the company disappeared and no longer supports your account, you're screwed. The recording that you're entitled to from a broadcast on the public airwaves would be unplayable because of restrictions imposed by the broadcaster. So one of the things that this reminds me of is with iTunes movies and Apple. Out of all of the ways to get a digital movie online, whether it's from Apple or Amazon Prime, Movies Anywhere, Vudu, only Apple allows you to actually download the movies onto your own hard drive, SSD or flash drive, and actually store them yourself in case anything happened, like Apple servers went down. So I made sure to download all of the iTunes movies that I had acquired either from digital codes or from buying them on iTunes. And these files come with DRM. So as you can see, this is an M4V Apple TV file. It's an Apple MPEG-4 movie and it's laced with DRM. But what Apple allows you to do is any device that's signed in with your Apple ID, doesn't matter if you have an internet connection connection or not can play back that file. So whether it's this computer or it's my laptop and even the Apple TV, somebody can start playing these movies locally on the local area network without ever needing an internet connection to verify that it's our movie or anything like that. I'm able to do this by running the Apple home sharing software on this Mac mini, which also happens to be the computer running the Plex server software. Of course, if I were to play this file back on say Plex, which is not Apple's software, it'll come back with an error message saying that this file contains DRM and it can't do anything with it. This is the same thing that would happen if you had a recording that had DRM and tried playing it back through Plex, or any device that wasn't approved to play back the file with DRM. This file basically has an identifier saying that this movie belongs to me, and it only allows playback of the movie on an approved device, aka anything Apple that I have. So one of the ways that this would be bad is if 
let's say Apple's servers are down, Apple is no longer a company, and all of my hardware is broken, I would never be able to play any of these movies ever again. Where something that wasn't laced with DRM, I'd still be able to shift it over onto a different device as long as I still had the file intact. With these movies, there's no way of doing that. DRM in this case is basically just annoying and it's an inconvenience since you have to play it through a specific application and only certain devices will work with it. Other than that, your DVR functionality will still stay the same, right? ATSC 3.0 also has the ability to restrict your recordings so that you can only watch them for a given period of time that either the broadcaster or the network allows. This means that after a given period of time, the broadcaster or network wouldn't allow you to view your recording anymore by expiring your recording. Also, the broadcaster may restrict your ability to fast forward, skip commercials, or auto delete commercials. Although this hasn't been implemented yet, this is a capability of ATSE 3.0 and DRM. Recording an ATSC 3.0 channel with DRM is contingent on there being a product that even supports recording channels with DRM. In order for an ATSC 3.0 device to support DRM, the device has to earn the next-gen TV logo. The only external tuners ever released for consumers are the HD Home Run Connect 4K, HD Home Run Flex 4K, and Zebrabox M1. As of the time of recording, none of these boxes have earned the next-gen TV logo, aka DRM support. Both the makers of HD Home Run and Zapper Box have stated that DRM support will come soon, but I'll believe it when I see it. This means that as of right now, the only external ATSC 3.0 tuners on the market can't even play back ATSC 3.0 channels with DRM. The next-gen TV website has recently been updated with more external tuners that they say are coming soon. So far, the only device with a somewhat definitive ship date is the ADTH Next Gen TV box for $95. Although they say it'll ship in July, new ATSC 3.0 tuners are infamous for being delayed. They also show upcoming products from Zinwell and Tolka that will have the next-gen TV logo, but none of these products have a ship date or a price. Based on the website's previous definitions of coming soon, it may take years for these products to come out. Also, Tableau had released a pre-order of an ATSC 3.0 version of a DVR box and ended up having to refund customers who had pre-orders because of how long it's taking them to earn the next-gen TV certification from the A3SA. Also, the next-gen TV website does not list any of the external tuners that are actually on the market right now, like the HD Home Run Flex 4K or the Zapperbox M1, because they haven't been given the certification blessing by the A3SA. This next-gen certification process is really slowing down the rollout of ATSC 3.0 compatible devices. Think about all of those $29 ATSC 1.0 DVRs that you see on Amazon. Something like that will not be possible if a stringent next-gen TV certification is required. I highly doubt many of these pop-up Chinese companies with white-label products are going to go through the headaches of getting certified for this process. If you only care about watching over-the-air TV while it's live, and you don't want to record anything, a next-gen certified TV will allow you to watch channels encrypted with DRM seamlessly without an internet connection. There are quite a few TVs that have earned the Next Gen TV logo. There are TVs from Hisense, LG, Samsung, and Sony. In my opinion, free ATSC 3.0 broadcast shouldn't have DRM encryption. Instead of calling the technology what it is, encryption, many broadcasters consider this a type of security. While DRM on ATSC 3.0 broadcasts will enhance the security measures for the over-the-air signal, doing so is putting a bad taste in consumers' mouths right when the broadcast industry needs ATSC 3.0 to succeed with the public. If you like this video, consider subscribing and liking the video. Follow Western New York Over the Air on Instagram at WNY Over the Air. Like Western New York Over the Air on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash WNY Over the Air. And check out WNYOverTheAir.com for live band scans, cord cutting tips, and much more.